we're logging that start time, perfect. We log the stop time and we got the duration. Hey, so in this video, we're gonna create a stopwatch inside of a Google Sheet. We have a completely blank sheet here. We are gonna use Apps Script a little bit, so hang on, I'll show you all the coding involved here. So you might be wondering, what is a stopwatch in a Google Sheet? It is a way to keep time and traction of time. We're gonna create a button out of a checkbox. We're going to click that button, log the time with a timestamp, then click the button again, log the time, and then calculate that duration immediately, and then keep track of all the times we start and stop that Stop one. I'm also going to show you step by step how to do this. We're going to start from a blank sheet. We're going to use the on edit simple trigger, which is built into Google Sheets. It's really interesting, and I'm going to show you every single step. Hang on. So before we get to coding, though, let's go back to our sheet and create a button. Not just any button. We're going to create a button with checkbox. We're going to insert a checkbox here. We're not going to just do that. We are going to make it 200 size. We're going to bring box back down to resize row. Let's do 30. And then let's make this an actual box. We're going to resize this column 30. So we have this clicker here. So what this is doing, this is changing from true to false. And what we're trying to do is we need something to change when we click something. And a checkbox does that. When you click it, it changes from true to false or false to true. Let's actually make this a little bit wider here. We're going to write start right here. We got a checkbox here, but we can see that this is changing, right? One way we can do this is let's create, let's just make it all black. And if we just make both the background and the text the same color, it doesn't work. It gives you this heads up. So what we need to do is select it and then change one of these just a little tiny bit. So we're going to change it to 02. Now, when we click it, it does not give us a message and you can't see the change, right? So this is going true, false, true, false every time we click it. Great. All right. Now, what do we do in our function, in our app script? We are creating a stopwatch here. And what we need to do, we need to use the on edit. Okay. But what do we need the on edit to be? We need an event. We need if, actually, we need e variable sheet equals e source, I think. So we have e.source get active sheet. We actually want the sheet name that it's on. So sheet.get, I think we need get name, but we can log this logger.log sheet name. Now, if we go to our box here, click this true false, then go to executions. See, we have some completed and we should in a moment be able to see if this is the sheet name. Now I'm showing you this because it's a really easy way to figure out if you're doing anything right. It's just to look at this log stuff. Let's keep looking. Let's refresh it. So now that we got the name of the sheet, we can say, hey, is the edit that we're editing on, is this edit on sheet one? And if it is, then let's log it. If we also need a sheet no, edit range, is it going to be equal e dot range? Now logger dot log edit range, but we want to log something else here because what we need to do is we need sheet name to equal sheet one and two ampersands. We need edit row equals two because it's a second row and edit column, which will create another there. It needs to equal one. That means a two, right? So row two, column one, we need to make sure that is set. And if that is, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, hey, create this, get a timestamp. We're going to do variable time equals new date. That's going to be our timestamp. We're going to just create a row here before, probably at, yeah, before something. We'll insert a row. So we need to do variable sheet. So yes, equals spreadsheet app will always do spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. We need to do variable sheet equals ss dot get sheet by name. We need sheet one. We just need to do sheet dot insert. Okay, we need sheet, which is sheet one. Insert rows before the fourth row. So we're going to go over to the fourth row. We're going to insert a row right before that. So we're going to say start and then stop. We also, if this says start, we want to change it to stop. And if it says stop, we want it to change to start. We want to do that by going to dot range. We want the range to be a one and then a one value. Yep. And then we want start if it's a stop. If go ss dot get sheet by name. So we have sheet. Probably want to change this to like something like sheet one. That might work better. Value equals a one get value. That's how we get the exact value of that. You can see this logger dot log a one value and we can log it. But if if a one value is equal to start. We will do something here. And if same thing, we'll get to this in a second. If it's stop, we'll do something else. So if it's start, then we want to do a one set value to stop. And if it's stop, 
going to do exactly the same thing except change it to start. So every time we click that button, that the cell above will edit. So we can see if this edit row, we can add this edit range is e.range, then row should be edit e range.row. We can also log this, logger.log, just to double check this is going okay, whatever that is. Then we can also log this edit column, which is the event e range.column. And we can log this just in case it's not correct. We can save, try clicking a couple times, and then go to our executions, and let's see if this is correct. We'll click refresh. There we go, we got null. Great. So we have it wrong, but it is getting something. Okay, we're logging something, but we're getting the wrong thing here. There we go. So now we have it correct. We are clicking on this checkbox. We are getting completed, a correctly completed event here. And we are correctly grabbing the range and then also edit row. Row is being edited. Now what's really cool is you can go edit something else. We can edit here, add some difference, or let's do time. And we can go back to our executions. This was correct. This was the last one. And see our first one was four so that's the row sorry column i think we have to refresh this to get both of them there we go the row was the first one three and the column was the second one four so now we're logging all not logging but we can log that whenever it happens sheet that we're editing is called sheet one making sure that the edit row that we're editing is the second row and the column is one so that a a2 and then once that happens we're going to be changing this from start to stop i think we can do that there you go that a1 is starting so now it labels it hey click here to stop or click here to start. If we notice, actually, we can probably go down the bottom. It, we have been adding the rows. We just haven't really noticed because we didn't have data in there. All right, how do we add the row? Or we, sorry, we add the row. Now we want to put in some data. If it's start, we're starting. So we go, where was that time? Okay, we need to add time somewhere. We need spreadsheet app. Let's just do this. Spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. We'll do all get sheet by name we have it actually here we can do, just do sheet one sheet one dot get range is going to be row four column two two set value and the value is going to be time look at that there we go we got the time that's the entire time stamp we can do date time perfect now when we want to do stop we actually want it in the other place, but we don't want to insert the row yet. We only want to insert the row when it's start. So let's do that there. And then we don't insert a row when it's, but we do set the value time. So we just move the cursor or the range to three. Great. So now if I click it, it should only put it in C4. Perfect. Let's format this number to date time. So now we have a time. This is going to always be C1 minus B4 not C1, four. So we can do equals C4 minus B4. We can format this number to a duration. We can click start. So we'll also add, let's go do exactly this, except the column four. And instead of set value, we're gonna set formula. And this formula we're gonna set up is gonna be C4 minus B4. And let's see how this goes. Okay, boom, oh, we got it here, we got it here. Now we're gonna start a new one, start time we're logging that start time perfect we log the stop stop time and we got the duration and all of these also change as they go down these formulas will change right so we don't need to change this formula we could also hard code this we could just do the math right we can take the this and minus this and put it here that's another way to do it but now we have a stopwatch inside of a google sheet you can have a start time stop time and the duration of those in between. Isn't that pretty cool? I hope you enjoyed that step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create that stopwatch inside of Google Sheets. If you're looking for the sheet and you just want to copy the sheet, become a Better Sheets member today, bettersheets.co. 